Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna do the initial setup of a Grandstream UCM 6301. You may be saying, didn't I do a video on this already? And I did about a year ago. The reason I'm redoing this is Grandstream kind of fell off of my channel. I didn't put out any videos after the initial one, so we're gonna start fresh and do a whole bunch of videos on this system. Grandstream does more than just voice communications. They also do routing and switching. They have some access points and door controls. Also, they have some IP cameras, which we will take a look at in the future. In this video, we're gonna get the UCM 6100 initially set up. We'll do inbound and outbound routes and we'll connect it to a VoIP SIP provider. The VoIP SIP provider that I use is VoIP MS and I do have affiliate links down below. If you'd like to support my channel, the best way to do so is to hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit MacTelecomNetworks.com. And you could also support me other ways with my affiliate links in the description. Before we start with the configuration, let's take a look at how my network is connected. At the top, I have a primary internet connection going down to my firewall. The firewall that I'm using is the Unify UDM SE. You may be using a different firewall altogether and switches, but the concept should be the same. We have a few switches connecting in between. And then in this office, I have a 16 port PoE light switch. Connecting to that switch, I have the UCM 6301 and then three VoIP phones. It's always best practice to segment your VoIP network from all your other networks. So we're gonna go into my firewall and create a new VLAN. Now I'm in my firewall, the UDM SE, and the steps may differ if you're using a different firewall, but this is how I would do it. I would create a new network. I'm gonna give it a name of VoIP, and then I'm gonna uncheck auto scale. And the subnet that we're gonna go with is 192.168. 18.1 slash 24. So this gives us 249 usable IPs. I'm gonna select manual, and then I'm gonna give it the same VLAN ID of 18 and then press add. Now the VoIP network has been added, we need to tag the ports which all our VoIP gear is plugged into. So our UCM 6301, as well as our IP phones. So I'm gonna click on my unified devices. I'm gonna to go to that 16 port switch. And on the switch, we could see all of my Grandstream devices. They're on port one, three, five, and seven. So I'm gonna click on each one of these ports. I'm gonna scroll down and for unify anyway, we're gonna put the network into our VoIP network and then press apply changes. Now all of these Grandstream phones will get an IP from 192.168.18.x subnet. The next step for us is to be able to find the IP of our UCM 6301. And in Unify, I could just search by the clients, I could type in Grandstream, and I know it's on port one of that 16 port switch, and it's getting an IP of 192.168.18.232. So I'm gonna open up a new web browser and then go to that IP. Now we're at the landing page for the 6301. The default username is admin and the default password is on the back of the UCM. So you have to take a picture of that and then put that in. Once you're done that, you can press log in. Now we're logged into the UCM and it's bringing up a prompt which says Wave is a desktop mobile application. We are gonna cover Wave in a total separate video. So I'm just gonna exit that. Now there's a few steps that we need to go to to get this up and running. The first one is to change our password from the default. I'm gonna enter the old password, put a new password in and my email. Now we're on the network settings and I'm just gonna leave mine on switch. We're gonna enter our time zone and then press next. And this is where we could do our extensions. So we could disable extension range or we could specify where we want to start. So the start extension range by default is 1000 and it's gonna create five extensions for us. I'm gonna leave it at that and then press next. Step five is to add trunks and routes. We're just gonna press next on that cause we'll do that in another step. And then we'll look at our summary and we're gonna press save. Now we're logged into the 6301 and there is a warning saying that we should change our username. So I'm gonna click on that. We need to enter the current password for the 6301. I'm not gonna change the password, but I'm gonna specify a new username. And then once I'm done that, I'm gonna press save. Now we're on the UCM 6301 dashboard. And the first thing I do is I bring in my phones. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to other features and then we're gonna click on zero config. Now under zero config, we could see that we have our three phones. The top phone is a GXP 1630. This middle phone isn't showing any model. And then the last phone is a GXP 2135. I know this middle phone is a Grandstream 2613. So we're gonna add the model. If we go over to model update, we could scroll down and then from our pages, I'm gonna list 40. I'm gonna press Control F and then type in 2613, and we can see the model here, the GRP 
2613 and I'm going to download that. Now under our zero config, I'm just going to start at the top and we're going to click the edit pencil. From here, there's a few things that we could do. We have the accounts up top, we have the line key settings, and then we have the multi-purpose key settings. The only thing that we're going to do for this video is give the phones extensions. So under account one, I'm going to give this phone extension 1000 and then I'm going to press save. Now for this middle phone, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to click the edit pencil, but this time it doesn't show the model. So what we need to do, we need to search the model. I'll type in 2613 and we can see that here. Once we click that, it will bring up all the settings. Now we have all the settings. I'm going to click on account one again, and this will be extension 1001. Now the last phone, we're going to click the edit pencil and then under account one, we'll give it extension 1002 and then we'll save. Now we need to apply the changes to the PBX. Now the changes are applied to the PBX. We need to push out the updates to the phone. So if we hover over this cloud icon, it's to update the phones and we're going to notify each one of the phones that we configured. Now all the phones have their extensions and we could do internal calling. So I'm going to call extension 1002 and on this status side, you'll see that it's ringing. You should be able to hear it ringing on the side and you can see that extension 1001 is in use. So that's great. We now have internal calls working, but what if we want to make external calls? Well, we need to set up a SIP trunk. And like I said, I'm using VoIP MS to do this. But within our grand stream, we're going to go over to extensions and trunks and then we're going to go down to VoIP trunks. Now I'm going to click on add SIP trunk. And my type of SIP trunk is a registered SIP trunk. The provider I'm using is VoIP MS. And for the host name, I'm going to be using the pop server that I selected in VoIP MS. And I'll show you where to find that. I'm logged into my VoIP MS account and I want to go over to main menu and then account settings. From account settings, I want to go to default DID routing. And then I'm going to scroll down and this is the pop server that I have selected, toronto7.voip.ms. So I'm going to copy and paste that into our config on our UCM 6301. We now have the host name specified. We need to add a couple more things. So we have a trunk registration number and this registration number is your account on your VoIP MS. So if we go back to my main portal, you could see that my account starts with 314 and the rest is blurred out. So I need to copy that account number down. With that account number, I'm placing it under trunk registration number, and then we need to put a password. So if you're using VoIP MS, it's going to be the password that you use for your main SIP IAX password. If you don't remember what it is, you could set a random password and it will send it to your email address. So I'm going to go back to my trunk and add that password. Now for the caller ID name, I'm going to be putting in the DID that I purchased through VoIP MS. And I'm showing this number here. It is just a test number. It isn't monitored. I don't use it for my business. And then after this, we could press save. Now we need to go back into this SIP trunk. So I'm going to press the edit icon and we could see this from user here. And this from user is going to be the exact same as our trunk registration number. So we'll just copy and paste this up to the from user. And you can see here that the from user and the trunk registration number is the same. There are a couple other settings within VoIP MS to make this work. So let's go back to the portal. So under our account settings, we have these inbound settings and the top protocol that we want to use is SIP and the device type will be IP, PBX, server, asterisk, or soft switch. The next thing that we need to make sure is set for inbound calls is our caller ID number. And we want to select this one here use one of my DIDs and this is the same number that I have in my Grandstream system. Now going back to our Grandstream dashboard, we could see our trunks and we have one in total and this one is currently available. So that means that it registered properly. Now we have our trunk configured. We need to make inbound and outbound call routes. So how we do that, we go back to extensions and trunks and the first one we'll create is outbound routes. I'm going to add a route. This one I'm just going to call outbound and then if we hover over patterns it will show us how to do this. I'm just going to make some very basic routes for now just to do 10 digit and 11 digit dialing. So if we click in the box and then type in X 10 times and then we press enter and then we type in X 11 times. This will allow us our 10 and 11 digit dialing. Under our privilege level, I'm going to set it to local. And then down at the bottom, we need to specify which trunk we want to use. I only have the one trunk, so we'll use that. We'll press save, and then we need to apply the changes. Now we have our outbound route created. We need to create our inbound route. So I'll click on inbound routes, and then we're going to add it. The trunk is going to be our VoIP MS, and this time my pattern is just going to be my phone number. So I'll copy and paste it in. Down at the bottom, we have our default destination. If we click on the dropdown, we could do it by DID, extension, 
multimedia meeting or we could do it IVR or voicemail group. For this video, we're just gonna do it to an extension and it will go to extension 1001. Once that's done, I'll press save and then apply. Now we have our SIP trunk set up, we have our inbound and we have our outbound routes configured. I'm gonna call into that number and we should see that call coming in through the CDR and then I will call from one of these phones out to my cell phone. So you can hear that the phones are ringing. I'm calling this from my cell phone and this will populate in the CDR once I hang up. So in the CDR, you could see that there was a call coming in from 1705, which was my cell phone. And it was going to our SIP trunk number, which is 647-476-4193. So now let me try calling outbound from one of the Grandstream phones to my cell phone number. And as you could hear, it's calling my cell phone and that will also show up in the CDR. One last thing I want to touch on before ending this video is how we update the firmware of our UCM. So if we go over to maintenance and then we scroll down, we could see upgrade. We're going to have to download the firmware and then choose the file what we want to upgrade. So if we go to Grandstream firmware and I'll put this in the link below, we could scroll down and we're going to want to find the IP PBX appliance. My appliance is the 6301. So we'll be going on the release 1.19.10. We click on that and then we could download it. There are other firmwares for the audio series of UCMs. Once you download this, you're gonna to have to extract the files to a folder, and I've already done that. So I'll go back to upgrade, we'll select the file, and then we can see this bin file. We're gonna click on it and press open. Once we're done that, that will start to update our firmware for our UCM, and the same steps go for our phones. We'd have to get the IP of our phone, log into the phone, and then upgrade the firmware. And that's gonna be it for this video on the initial setup of our Grandstream UCM. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this is gonna be an ongoing series, and we're gonna get more deep into the weeds and do more technical things with our Grandstream voice system. In the future, we'll integrate some of their video calling as well as some of their door access and maybe a bit of their network. If there's anything that you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video hit the thumbs up button if you're new here please subscribe and hit the bell icon all right thanks